So now we're going to talk about cell organelles and other cell parts. Remember last time we talked about the cells have a plasma membrane. Every single cell has a plasma membrane no matter what type of cell it is. The plasma membrane it serves as a boundary for the cell to control what goes in and what goes out and to separate the inside from the outside. It also recognizes signals. So it recognizes, hey, you seem like a good cell or you're part of my body or hey, you're trying to hurt me like a bacteria or a virus. We also have the cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like material on the inside. And again, this is for an animal cell. Same thing would be true for a plant cell. Plant still cell has the plasma membrane, still has cytoplasm in the middle. We're not going to talk about every single organelle, uh, but I want to talk about a couple of them, especially the important ones. Probably the, mo the most important one, um, other than the nucleus, would be the mitochondria. The purpose or the function of the mitochondria is to make energy, ATP, from cellular respiration. Cellular respiration takes sugar and oxygen to make ATP. Very, very important. It fuels the work of life. Um, the structure is a double membrane. So we got an outer membrane and then we have this inner membrane. This inner membrane right here provides a ton of surface area and what that surface area does is allows for more opportunities to make ATP which is the whole thing. Um, obviously mitochondria is in animal cells but what people often mistake and they forget is that mitochondria is in plant cells as well. So plants make energy two ways, well kind of. They make energy through the mitochondria. Okay, they, they take sugar and oxygen and they make energy in the form of ATP through cellular respiration. Very, very, very important. Okay, But they also have chloroplasts. And chloroplasts are really, really cool because chloroplasts make sugar from the sunlight. So the chloroplasts make the sugar that the mitochondria use to make ATP. Pretty cool, huh? They can do everything on their own. So that process, again, is photosynthesis, where you take sunlight and carbon dioxide to make ATP, although all that ATP gets used, in the, ooh, gets used in the same process. So the big, most important thing is that photosynthesis makes sugar. Eh, who cares? Sugar. Sugar. Photosynthesis takes sunlight and carbon dioxide to make sugar. Okay. So the sugar is the stored energy. That's the same sugar that goes up here to sell you the respiration to make a whole bunch of ATP. So it builds in the leaves and the roots and the fruit out of the sugars. And of course, the ATP is energy. Okay. So remember that mitochondria are in both cells. So we have an animal cell on the left, a plant cell on the right, and mitochondria, lo and behold right there and there and there in the animal cell. And whoa, look at that guy right there in the plant cell. There's the mitochondria, okay? And then there's the chloroplasts, okay? So we've talked about the cell membrane, the cytoplasm. Now we're talking about the mitochondria, okay? The mitochondria makes ATP energy from sugar and oxygen through cellular respiration. Again, so now for a plant cell, a uh, plant cell has a plasma membrane, cytoplasm, and whoo, mitochondria, and chloroplasts. Uh, we'll get to this cell wall here in a few moments. Okay, the nucleus, very, very, very important. The function of the nucleus is to house DNA, to house and protect DNA. DNA are the instructions for making all the proteins. That's kind of important. The structure of the nucleus is they have a membrane around the outside. They have a nucleolus, which is this little kind of ball towards the center. That's where all the ribosomes are made, in the nucle nucleolus. And then, of course, strung out through here is all of your DNA, all strung out looking spaghetti-like. Okay, uh, Sometimes they're in chromosomes. 
It's found, nucleus are found in all cells except for prokaryotic cells, okay? So if it has a nucleus, it is a eukaryotic cell. If it has a nucleus, it is a eukaryotic cell, okay? So plant cells, animal cells, fungus cells, whatever, okay? So... We've talked about the mitochondria, we've talked about the plasma membrane, we've talked about the cytoplasm, and we just got done talking about the nucleus with the nucleolus and the DNA to protect the DNA and control what goes on in the cell. Same thing here, all the same parts as just a plant cell. There's nucleus, whoops, there's the nucleus up here with its DNA and nucleolus. Now, cell wall. Animals... Animal cells, that's us, that's humans, do not have a cell wall. Prokaryotic cells, the ones without a nucleus, they have a cell wall. Fungus, they have a cell wall. Plant cells, they have a cell wall. Algae, they have a cell wall. Everything except for animal cells have a cell wall. Now, the purpose of the cell wall has absolutely, positively nothing to do with transport. All it is there for is to provide structure and support. I think of scaffold scaffolding on the outside of a building, or think about it as a ladder, okay? A ladder is helping you get up to a building, but it can let any, the wind can go in and out through it. You could throw a baseball or a football or a frisbee or dance shoes or whatever through the ladder. The ladder is not controlling anything uh, in or out. All it does is provide you support to climb. The cell wall is the exact same thing. It's not controlling what goes in or what goes out. It just is there for support for the cell. So that kind of leads us to a segue into prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells, they still need to do work too, okay? Even though they're primarily bacteria, they still need to do work. They do not have a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, nor do they have membrane-bound organelles, okay? So they don't have a mitochondria, they don't have chloroplasts, they don't have a nucleus, the DNA is strung throughout the cell, as we see down in here. This is all their DNA just strung out in the middle, okay? They, ha they do have a plasma membrane, and they also have ribosomes. So they have a plasma membrane around the outside to let things in and out. And they have ribosomes, okay? Ribosomes make the proteins. They also have a cell wall outside of the plasma membrane. Okay, you got a cell wall around the outside. And they have an extra layer of protection called a capsule. Okay, so they have three layers of protection. The plasma membrane, the cell wall, and the capsule. They may have a series of folded membranes inside. So there may be some membranes on the inside here. Okay, but they won't touch. It'll still be kind of one thing there. It won't be... Um, it won't be an organelle. And then sometimes they also have these tails, which are called flagellum, or these little hair-like things that are called cilia. And that's it for prokaryotic cells. This guy is probably the most important flow chart that you could have memorized for all the stuff that we just covered. Here is what I mean. So to start off with, we have prokaryotic cells, plant cells, and animal cells. All three have a plasma membrane and ribosomes. So no matter what, if it's a cell, doesn't matter if it's prokaryotic, eukaryotic, eukaryotic plant cells, or eukaryotic animal cells, it has to have a plasma membrane and it has to have ribosomes, okay? So then how about what plants and prokaryotic cells have in common, okay? Plants and prokaryotic cells both have a cell wall. Okay, they both have a cell wall. What about plant cells and animal cells? They're both eukaryotic, so they both have a nucleus. They both have organelles, membrane bound. Okay, they both have mitochondria. They both have a large size. 
Okay. So then prokaryotic cells, what's unique about them is they have a small size, they have folded membranes for metabolism, and they have an extra layer of capsule for protection. Animal cells, they do not have a cell wall. They're the only type of cells without a cell wall. And then one thing to draw in here is that plant cells have chloroplasts that make them unique to make sugar. If you can get this diagram and keep it straight in terms of how they're all connected and how they're not connected and what they have in common and what they don't have in common, you're going to be in pretty good shape for all this information. So the structure and function of cells, just like the structure and function um, of enzymes or proteins, they, everything has a specific shape to do a specific job. So here we have a red blood cell that looks kind of looks like a jelly-filled donut. Its job is to carry oxygen. So it has a shape to carry hemoglobin to carry the oxygen. Here we have a neuron that kind of looks like a bolt of lightning in this picture, but you have lots of places for input for things to come in and a long axis, or it's called an axon, uh, that's part of the cell, part of the neuron, to transmit that signal, to relay it to the next thing. It has a highly specific shape for a highly specific job. Muscle fiber, very specific, doesn't look like the neuron or a red blood cell. And here we have microvilli, these guys in here, okay, in the digest for the digestive system. Very, 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 very important. Again, doesn't look like the muscle fiber, the neurons, or the red blood cell. So all cells have all of the information to become any type of cell. What that means is all cells have all of the DNA. It doesn't matter if it's DNA from your skin cell, from a hair follicle, uh, from your heart, from your brain, whatever. All cells has all of the DNA. The difference is, is when a cell executes instructions or it says, hey, you, Gene, turn on to develop into a specific shape for a specific sh job, now the cell is differentiated. So I want you to think of differentiated as having a highly specific shape to do a highly specific job. If it's just kind of your basic round cell, here's your nucleus and kind of cell parts and all that kind of stuff. If it's just that basic shape, kind of like this stem cell here, okay, that is undifferentiated. It's unspecialized. It's unspecialized. If it has a highly specific shape like this neuron does, then it is differentiated. It has its highly specialized. So it has a highly specific shape. So here our stem cell would be highly undifferentiated. It's just this ball roundness. It can become anything. It has all the DNA to become anything, and it still could, just depending on which genes are activated. Here we have a red blood cell that kind of looks similar to this, but it still has this indentation. It has a job to do so. This cell is differentiated. It has a specialized shape. Here we have a liver cell that kind of has a basic shape. It can do a lot of different things as well. It's it's partially differentiated, but not completely differentiated. Unlike this neuron over here that is so super differentiated. It has a super, super specialized shape to do a very, very, very important job. And that is all she wrote. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.